Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God, in the person of His Holy Spirit, come upon your life, meaning He comes to give you the direction, the guidance for you to know how to make the best choices for your life. To choose a husband, to choose a wife, to choose the job where you will work, to choose what you will do to earn money, to choose what you will eat, what you will wear, etc. For you to make all your choices that you may enjoy life with health and quality because this is the will of God. He wants that all of us have a quality life. But this life of quality depends on our choices. Is it not true? So you marry badly, you choose the wrong person to marry, to be joined with. So you will have a family filled with problems, a relationship filled with problems. Everything depends on your choices. You chose. Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and they reaped the fruit. Today we reap the fruit of the bad choices which we make daily. That is why Jesus said, when Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God, meaning seek that the king of the kingdom of God, that the Lord of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, comes and guide and directs your life that you may know how to make the best choices for your life. Because from the moment in which the man ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then they needed to make choices. Before, they did not need to make any choices. Everything was good and perfect. Whichever choice he made was perfect. But from the moment he disobeyed God, he obviously became a hostage of the devil, of this cruel world. If he did not eat of the fruit of the tree of good, of knowledge of good and evil, then this would not have happened. So be intelligent. Jesus comes and offers to you the tree of life. The tree of life is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. When you subject your life to the Lord King of the kingdom of heaven, and it's obvious and clear that when the Spirit of the Most High God descends upon you, then you will know how to choose, to opt for what is best for you, for what is righteous for you, for what fits in your life perfectly. That's it. Do you understand, my friend? It's clear that you understand what I'm saying because Better than this, only drawing and coloring it in. But the truth is that Jesus came to bring life and life with abundance. But for this life with abundance to prevail, we need to submit to the discipline of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We need to submit to the rules of the kingdom of heaven which is obedience, it is obedience, submission. When a person submits to the kingdom of God, as Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So, what happens? The Spirit of God descends upon them and makes a dwelling in their life, in their body, in their head, and guides their soul to the green pastures. So he becomes the blessing. He does not chase after blessings. He is the blessing. 
And when he is the blessing, he does not need to ask, please pray for me. What do I do? Help me clear this doubt. No. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, he does not live in doubts. The Holy Spirit eliminates doubts because he is the spirit of the altar. He is the spirit of faith. He is the spirit of assurance. He is the spirit of God. He is the spirit of the Lord Jesus. He led Jesus. He guided Jesus. Each step of Jesus was guided, was led according to the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who took Jesus to the desert. Now you can imagine. The Holy Spirit guided Jesus the whole time. And that is why he overcame death. He overcame everything. Overcame the devil. He overcame death. He overcame everything. The world. And today, he is sat on the right hand of the Father Almighty and to not lose his disciples, his followers, he sent his spirit. Look, now you guide my disciples, please, because I am waiting for them here. So, my friend, be intelligent in faith. Use your intelligence. Don't use your heart. Don't use your heart. Don't use your soul to decide for you. No. Use your spirit led by the Spirit of God. Do you understand? So, within churches in general, and everyone, including the Universal Church, there are those people who are assistants, pastors' wives, bishops' wives, pastors, bishops, auxiliaries, missionaries, people who contribute to the work of God physically. However, these people think the following, well, if I'm helping the church, if I'm contributing to the kingdom of God, I obviously am righteous before the Most High. I already have the Holy Spirit. So what happens? He thinks that he has the Holy Spirit just because he was given authority or a position inside of the church. Oh, he's a missionary, he's an assistant, she's a pastor's wife, he is a bishop. So he says, oh, I got where I am because God brought me to this. No, not necessarily. That person made their choices and reached the position of a pastor, a bishop, whoever it may be. However, he did not submit to the Holy Spirit. He did not surrender to the Holy Spirit. He did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He received the spirit of deceit. The devil is a master of deceit. He is agile in deceit. There in Revelation, it said, says that he deceived the nations. If he deceived nations, will he not deceive one person? So, my friend, many people base their faith because once they felt a great emotion, a great source of happiness, and they spoke in tongues. Oh, now I have the Holy Spirit. And the pastor soon after called them to do the work of God. Or the pastor married her. But, shame, she was deceived by the spirits of the world. She was moved by a spirit of emotion. It was not the Holy Spirit. Why am I saying this? Because these people who were deceived, who claim to have the Holy Spirit, who claim to have but they don't have, they deceive themselves with the exterior situation. Oh, I'm an assistant, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I'm this, I'm that. However, these people, unfortunately, did not have an experience with the Lord Jesus, did not submit 
to the king of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. They did not submit 100%. They surrendered halfway. They surrendered a bit. And of course, they were deceived. The devil saw they did not give everything, so he takes the remainder and starts to live in that person. And that person starts to do the work of God. However, this work is half filled as well. And their personal life is a disaster. Is a disaster. Why? Because he tries to help others, but that person is depressed, empty. Everything he does just moves backwards. Within that person, there is a huge emptiness. Within them, there are doubts, fears, insecurities. Within that person, there is turmoil spiritually, but on the outside, they are dressed as an assistant or of a pastor. They look like the others who are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, they lead their lives day after day, year after year, but their lives do not flourish. Their life remains the same. I don't know if you watched the testimony of Donna Sandra. Yesterday we played it. And Donna Sandra was 14 years inside of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Living a life of pretense because she wanted and wanted and wanted to conquer a house, to conquer a life of comfort. On the outside, her body wanted the pleasure and the comfort of this world. But within her, there was an emptiness, there was sadness. So she was a person who sought even to help others, but she would not help herself. Why? Because she did not receive the Holy Spirit. She did not have the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit did not guide her. And that is why she lived in doubts, with hesitation, insecurity and fear, etc. Her life was blocked. Perhaps your life has been blocked exactly because you don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm not here judging anyone. I'm here speaking of the situations which we have seen in the church. So many pastors who before were icons, they were people whom I even respected as a man of God and then later I found out that they were fake. They were like Judas. Why? Because within them there was the spirit of deceit. Was I deceived? Yes, I was deceived. But I'm a man. I'm just clay. God called me, but he allowed me to see those things for me to learn. I took advantage of it. Today, I'm trying to help you because we're here in the Holy Campaign. And if you're going to participate, evaluate yourself. If you are a person whom interiorly you're filled with faith and joy, you have peace inside of you. I know battles we all have. On the outside, we face only battles because we are in the world. But within us, because of the kingdom of God, the king of the kingdom of God, we have peace. We have joy within us. If this is not what's happening to you, so you need to join the campaign, focused on receiving the gifts of gifts, the best which God has for you, which is the Holy Spirit. Have you ever thought to have the Spirit of the Most High within you? It's a glory and I cannot say how it is because there are no words which can express this greatness. But in the moments of difficulties, of tribulations, 
afflictions. He does not leave us. He doesn't leave us alone. No, he comforts and consoles us. He strengthens us. So we have the assurance in the moments of difficulties which I went through. Come on. The Holy Spirit never lacked to support me, to strengthen me, to comfort and console me. Now, if I did not have the Holy Spirit, certainly I would succumb. I would die because I would not bear it. So, my friend, seek and receive the Holy Spirit while this does not happen in your life. Do not do anything else. Do not take any other decision which will give you an uncertain future. Firstly, before you receive, or rather you marry a man, a woman, before you build a family, build a marriage with God in the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Holy Spirit in spirit. Jesus is the Holy Spirit in spirit. He wants to make a dwelling inside of you. Put this in your mind. Seek Him above anything else. He is the great pearl of great value. He is the hidden treasure in the field. Put all your strength in this campaign to receive the Holy Spirit. And you will see that never more your life will be the same. The battles which you face today will be small because the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom, will guide you until the eternal life. You will conquer victory, the victory which Jesus demands that we conquer as well. When he said to him who overcomes, only the one who overcomes, and he demands from the overcomer because he gives to the Holy Spirit to those who want exactly to overcome. Right? Tomorrow we will speak more. God bless you all. But don't forget this. The first thing in your life, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Meaning, receive the Holy Spirit. Meaning, be the blessing. Meaning, be the water which Jesus said, those who thirst come to me and drink, because the water which I give will make in him a fountain for life, for the eternal life, the guarantee of your victory. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.